hello youtube in this part two for this tutorial we are just going to be focusing more on the skin retouching in part one we had the color grading process and let me show you what we had and those interested in how i did the color grading for this image make sure you check the link right above here and just click on that link and you can learn how we did the color grading and this was initially our before and this is the after you can see how we got the image and if at all you just want to watch the video just make sure to check on that link that displayed right there so we're just going to be focusing more on the skin retouching and correcting the color issues and removing this distraction in photoshop so we're just going to come right to image edit with and become adobe photoshop 2020 and i prefer tiff and 16 bit right here and compressed and i'm going to come to edit variants to open the image into photoshop to do the skin retouching of a full body portrait so this was a request by one of my subscribers about doing a full body portrait image and see how frequent separation can be used on a full body portrait so this is a tutorial that you really wanted and here we go with it now so just waiting for image to be taken into photoshop and right now we are in photoshop and we're going to be doing the skin retouching so usually i tend to crop my images in a ratio of four to five before i do anything else so i'm just going to come right here and i crop the image in that ratio of four to five so just come get my crop tool and crop it in that ratio of four to five so i could as well take this a little bit higher but as i'm doing this i'm just going to come and make sure content aware has been checked because i want to get more information in the headroom right there and simply hit enter it's going to take quite a while as it is loading and sometimes it can be a little bit faster so let's just wait for it to get done so that we can do skin retouching on this image and i know this is going to be a very very quick tutorial whereby you're going to be learning so so much from it so let's just wait for photoshop to really respond and when it is done responding we can focus more on the emphasis for this tutorial so it's trying to fill up that extra space that we have in this image and in this case we're just going to be using an action because i have so many in-depth or beginner friendly tutorials on this channel and you can check them out to learn how we separate the image using frequency separation and that really covers everything from the very start to the very end and i don't know why photoshop is really taking quite a while but we're just going to wait for it to really get done with everything so i think it is almost done so we're just going to come to the actions and we play our 16-bit frequency separation action and you can see it has done a pretty decent job and if at all you feel like it hasn't done that job quite well so i just want to feel all to get rid of this and i'm just going to create a new layer by hitting ctrl command j and it is on this layer that I want to remove this distraction. So I'm just going to get my spot healing brush tool and sim simply come and paint over this soft box to eliminate it. Sometimes it can do, it is more of a hit and miss. So make sure to really nail it. So you can see it has done a, a nice job, but some areas are really looking weird. So I'm just going to do a few more clicks to eliminate uh that those awkward areas so and when you're done doing that you're just going to go straight into a skin retouching and just play our 16-bit frequency separation action so i'm just going to come right here to the actions and i play my 16-bit frequency separation action and before i play it let me just merge these layers by hitting shift ctrl e or shift command e on the keyboard to merge these layers and you're just going to come to the action and play our 16-bit frequency separation action so usually we have to zoom in and look for the area that has to be the target so for this case the face is going to be the reference because it has more textures and usually for full body images i tend to use a radius of around five five pixels so depending on the details that you have in your image you have to move it at that point so just come and hit ok and action is going to continue playing and when it is done playing we're just going to go straight into screen retouching using the mixer brush tool so usually i'm just going to come and i turn off the black and white layer but if at all you feel like you want to use it as a whole player you can leave it on and i'm just going to also come and turn off the high frequency layer 
and come and get the mixer brush tool simply right click and get the mixer brush tool under the brushes make sure it is a clean brush and make sure this option is selected what is 9 load 75 mix 94 at 100 percent make sure sample all is not checked and i'm going to zoom all the way in and start blending or evening out the skin tones so zoom in and just come and blend the skin tone so i'm basically trying to blend the colors that are not transitioning quite well in this photo using a mixer brush tool and he's really doing a pretty nice and decent job to blend or even out the skin color or skin tone so i'm just going to come and paint in those areas and come usually for full body images i don't take so so much time trying to work on them because unless someone is saying he won't have to zoom all the way in the way i have zoomed this image in so i tend to really do less trying to retouch and i retouch from a distance and let's see what we have just done right in the first area that's the before after before after so i'm just going to turn this off and i work on the rest of the body so i just want to show you how you can get rid of these areas that are really dark and how you can brighten them up in your images so let's just keep around and we see how i do the skin retouching on full body portraits and i felt like i hadn't done this so let me just do this so i'm trying to match or blend colors using the mixer brush tool in different areas of uh, the model's skin so that at the end of it all we have uniform and even skin tone transitions so I'm just going to also come right here and I know the most challenging part is going to be the next one which is this area I hope you can see this area down here so I'm just going to zoom in and take a little bit more time trying to blend the colors in these areas using my mixer brush tool so let's just come and blend and work on these areas to be really fine and a little bit more perfect so I just trying to even out those colors and painting colors that look alike but don't don't mind about uh, the lighting issues because they're just going to be fixing that and breaking up these areas using frequency separation so i'm just going to come these uh, areas and also blend right there and you can see we're just trying to blend using our mixer brush tool and it's really doing a pretty and nice and decent job so far so let's just come this other side and we also blend these areas too just like that so just come reduce on the size using the open and close brackets on the keyboard and work on a smaller area if at all you want to work on a way smaller area so i'm just going to work right there so this is what i do usually for the first step and just come this lower area and also work on those areas just like that so i'm just painting or evening out the colors within these dark areas and let's see what we have so far command minus to zoom out so far so good that's the before and after before after so i'm just going to zoom in slightly and work right in these areas even more when i'm seeing everything quite well with the texture layer turned on this time around I'm just going to work right there and this looks nice and more decent so next thing I want to do I'm just going to incorporate the mix the lasso tool technique come and get the lasso tool feathering at 22 pixels and incorporate it in these areas right here so I'm just going to come and I select this area that has the same variation and come to filter and come to blur and come to Gaussian blur so usually I for face photos I multiply this radius by only three. So for the face images I multiply it by three and I just put in that value. But for the lower parts, for example, the legs, I usually multiply that by three and add five to that value. So five by three you get fifteen and plus five you get twenty. So I'm just going to type in twenty right there. And you can see does a way nice and decent job. So I'm just going to select these uh, areas and apply that effect and you can see it is perfect in the areas we may have accidentally missed out when we are using the mr brush tool to blend the skin color or 
the skin on the legs of the model so right click and come to Gaussian blur just like that I'm just going to apply it right in this shadow area so make sure to apply it on to the overall image so I'm just going to come to the face area and we also apply our lasso tool technique but this time around we're just going to come back to filter blur and come to Gaussian blur and this 20 is too much so we had 5 initially so 5 by 3 is 15 I'm just going to type in 15 and leave it at that and apply it right in these other areas just like that and it's going to fine tune the image to look a little bit more and get rid of those hot spots within the face of the model so right click and come to Gaussian blur so I'm just going to zoom out and this is a little bit better so we just want to remove the blemishes so come the high frequency layer and get our clone stamp tool and zoom all the way in and get rid of the blemishes so reduce on the size by using the box brackets or open and close brackets on the keyboard and alternate copy and paste so just want to clean up the image to look a little bit better just come and clean up those areas come to the face area and also do a little bit of cleaning up just like that and let's just do this and the next thing is going to be brightening the areas that are really dark using frequency separation and I just hope you're really around and you're really anxiously waiting for how I'm going to do this I know a few of you may be knowing what I'm going to do but uh, most of you may not know this technique that I'm going to be incorporating within this image. So I'm just going to go all the way down to the legs and also work or remove those skin imperfections and make the image look a little better. So I'm just going to come right this other side and also. So I'm basically cleaning up using my clone stamp tool before I make this colors or areas brighter so i'm just going to do this command minus to zoom us so the most biggest technique i'm going to be using you can see in my frequency separation action i have this empty layer so i'm just going to come to that empty layer and select it and come right to the brushes and get my soft round brush at a pass of around just going to use 12 percent i'm going to come and hit enter and the floor of 100 percent zoom in right here on the leg of the model and now i just want to brighten this area to be as bright as this so i'm just going to hold down the alternate key on the keyboard and click so alternate and click on this brighter area and just come and start painting on this darker area just like that so just paint slightly and you have to really be careful just like that and come you can as well do and paint there and come and copy from this bright area in this area too by holding on the alternate and left clicking to copy a color right there and you can come and brighten up these other areas so that is what i'm basically trying to do using that empty layer that's why most of you have always asked me why i have an empty layer and this is the reason as to why i have that empty layer in my frequency separation action so you can as well create one if at all you want to and if at all you wish to support this the channel rather you can just come and go in the link in the description of this video and you can purchase my frequency separation action so i'm just going to brighten up these areas too so i'm basically copying a brighter area and painting on the image just like that and painting through to brighten up those areas copy and paint but that is too much so make sure i don't overdo it and leave it somehow close to the natural end so you can see the before and the after for just that technique and we have just matched or brightened up those areas so i'm just going to come to this other area right here and copy and just paint to brighten it up and make it look a little bit more uniform so you can as well come to this area and also brighten it up so you can as well correct the color inconsistencies in the image by just doing that 
So using command minus to zoom out, let's see what we have so far in the before and after. So this is the before and after, before, after. I hope you can see what we have right now. And just using frequency separation, we have gotten the image to look as clean and neat as that. So just going to delete the black and white layer and do a little bit of uh, adding some nice and beautiful highlights to the image. So come to the curves adjustment layer and simply come to our color range. So just going to come to select and come to color range rather and we're just going to click on the bright area. So make sure sampled layers is selected and selection is also active and quick mask is active. So we're just going to zoom in and look for a bright area in the image. That can work as a reference for the highlights in the overall image. So for this case, I feel like this area is a little bit brighter. And you can see it you can as well change the fuzziness for the highlights and simply hit OK. So after doing that, we just want to add a little bit of glow to this image. And in order to add that glow, you're just going to come and make a midpoint right here in the curves and simply brighten it up. And you can see it has added that nice and beautiful glow to this image. So you can see the before and after and it really has that nice and great glow. So next thing is going to be doing some tiny bits to this image like the eye and teeth whitening. So just going to create a stamp visible layer by hitting shift alternate control E on the keyboard or shift alternate command E on the keyboard and we are going to create a stamp visible layer and we're just going to go to filter camera filter and we use the adjustment brush tool to do the eye and teeth whitening. So I'm just going to zoom in just like that and come get the adjustment brush tool and I'm just going to be using my preset for the eyes and teeth and I'm just going to paint to whiten the eyes and teeth. And if at all you're interested and you don't know how to set up the adjustment brush tool to do for you this every single time, I'm going to make a tutorial about that. You Just let me know in the comment section if at all you wish to have it. So command minus to zoom out and you can see it is really done. We are done whitening the eyes and teeth. You can come to the basic adjustments and simply open up the shadows slightly. If at all you feel the image is a little bit darker and open up the exposure too. So just come and hit OK and the next thing is going to be doing some slight color grading or using our selective color. So just going to come right here to the selective color option and just darken the blacks even more just like that around let's go with around four and add a little bit of blue tint to the image just like that and that really takes the image to a whole new level and you can go ahead and save the image and if at all you don't know how to save images that are sharp and images that won't change in color after you have been able to save them in Photoshop, simply come to File Export and you come to Export As. And after doing that, it's going to bring up another window and how you have to do that and what you have to do. Just come right here and make sure I select the format as JPEG. Image size, I usually don't tamper with the image size. And Resample and select as by Cubic Sharper. So that is the resample that I tend to use for images and make sure you embed the color profile and also convert it to srgb if at all you don't wa want to have color change issues in your photos after doing skin retouching so i want to show you that so just come and make sure you take this other option and when it is ticked it means all the color grading that you apply to a photo is going to remain intact and the image won't change in color after you have posted it or shared it somewhere else if i told you had that issue of color change after retouching in photoshop let's just wait for it to get done and when it is done we're just going to simply hit export and the image is going to be saved in that folder so just going to come and hit export and just come right here look for a location and simply hit save so this is how i do skin retouching for full body images and also correct color issues on photos if at all you have found this helpful, don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If at all you have found this really helpful, Ronnie's from Ronnie's Photography. Thank you for watching and see you in yet more amazing tutorials. And don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating.